Welcome to a code report video, the first video of 2024. Happy New Year. And in this video, we're going to be comparing BQN and C++ for a small algorithm that I was trying to implement this morning. And I spent an hour trying to get this working in C++. Gave up, went to Twitter. Tristan Brindle solved it for me. We will get to that in a second. First things first, let us describe what we are doing with this algorithm. So basically, we want to perform a scan. A scan is just an operation similar to a reduction, but it outputs all of the incremental results. So if we're doing a plus scan, here we are going to just basically add up all our numbers. So the first in our output is gonna be one, the second is gonna be one plus two, which is three, the third is gonna be one plus two plus three equals six, etc. Hopefully you get the idea. And what we wanna do here is we want to chunk up our array into basically equal length sub chunks and then perform the scans on each of those chunks and then recombine the array however we want. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reshape this into a matrix. Not exactly chunking, but for our purposes, it's gonna work. And we're gonna do that by making use of this cute trick. And so say we want a two chunks of length three. We combine that with reshape, and that is going to basically give us two rows of three elements each, or a matrix that is two by three. And this is really cute, because basically what it says is we want three columns in this matrix, figure out whatever the number of rows is gonna be. And note that this won't work if this number does not divide into the length of our list, but you know, for the purposes of this short video, it will work. The next thing we wanna do is factor out this three. We're hard coding it here. We want this uh, n value of n to be whatever we want. So we just replace this with our second argument and put the three here. Now we have the same thing. Fantastic. Next thing we wanna do is apply our scan to each of the rows in our matrix. So maybe we actually the first thing we'll do is we can just do this with a simpler operation reverse. So if we do reverse, note that this is gonna reverse the columns, not the rows. And so in order to make this operate on the rows, we need to use the cells, AKA rank one modifier. So now we are reversing the rows in our matrix and we just want to deshape in order to get back our final results. So at this point, the only thing we need to do is replace this reverse operation with our plus scan or whatever kind of scan we want. So in this case, we'll just make it a plus scan. And there we are, good to go. So you can see 136 is our first plus scan, and then we reset and it ends up with four, nine, and 15, because that's four plus five, and then four plus five plus six. Last thing we might wanna do is factor out this binary operation so that it's not hard coded. We can just do that by replacing this with a double struck F, changing the name, to have a leading underscore, which makes it a one modifier. And then we do the same here and add the plus operation and we're good to go. So now if we want, we can change this to a, a multiplication scan. And if we wanna change this, note if we change it to two, the 20 and 120 should change to five and five times six, which is 30. There we go, fantastic. Hopefully this makes sense. Last thing actually I can highlight, this may or may not be worth doing, but it's, it's worth highlighting at least that Note that we are reshaping here and then deshaping here. And this is an example of where we are kind of applying operation and then under that first operation, applying another operation and, th and then undoing the first one. So there is a modifier called under, which we can use to do this. So if we parenthesize this, there's a couple different ways. We can turn this into a monadic fork like this and then it works, or we can partially apply the reshape and that also works. So this might be less readable compared to what we had before where we were just deshaping at the end. Note that deshape is the monadic version of reshape. But anyways, BQN, absolutely fantastic. Link in the description if you wanna play around yourself with this chunk scan algorithm, functions, modifiers, fantastic. Let us switch now to C++ to see the code that I was trying to write this morning. Note that this is a simplified version of the code that I was actually working with. I can't show you that code because it's not in a public repository. However, I can show this simplified version and I could not get this to work. So note we're making use of C23's chunk view and then C20's transform and join view. We don't have ranges colon colon two implemented in GCC yet. So we are making use of the one in the range V3 library. And similarly, we also do not have a scan view, which is called partial sum in range V3. So we're making use of this, which is part of the issue. So first things first, let's simplify this. Let's just take uh, the rest of this out and show you what this is gonna look like. It's gonna have to compile for a second, but basically I'm expecting this to be 
a range of ranges where the first range is one, two, three, and the second one is four, five, six. So fantastic. And the reason I have this common to doubt reverse lambda here is because we can get this to work using just standard C++ if we comment out the scan and we need to switch these semicolons around. But now we expect each of these subranges, one, two, three, to be reversed to three, two, one, and the second one, four, five, six, to be reversed to six, five, four. And once this finishes compiling, that is exactly what we see. And after this is done, we can basically just uncomment it out our join and our ranges too. And this is just going to flatten our range of ranges into a single range and then turn that into a vector. And once this fin finishes compiling, we're expecting this to be 321654 all in one set of brackets, which it is exactly. So hopefully you see this is the structure of what we want in order to build up our chunk scan. So we're going to delete the reverse, uncomment the scan, and then type the scan back in here. However, this is not going to compile. And we end up with a 261 line error that's basically whining that it can't find this. And that's because I've missed the views namespace. So this is a view, not an algorithm. And I think actually that's the problem is that there is also an algorithm in numeric called partial sum. So it is trying to match the overload that is accepting a range here and failing because the algorithm also expects an output iterator. However, I fix this error and then get another error. It's actually pretty hit and miss. Sometimes this just returns you an empty uh, brackets to indicate that your result of this operation is just an empty list or empty vector. Sometimes though it gives you this program terminate, terminated with uh, SIG, SEGV. In my version, in the program that I was writing, it actually fails to compile. And I couldn't figure this out. I ended up going to Twitter and then Tristan Brindle is the individual that actually ended up pointing out my issue here. I found that I could get it to work if I just put a std two vector, uh, a ranges two std vector here. And what that does is it cleans up the issue that I'm trying to combine ranges views from range v3 with standard views from the C++ standard library. In general, don't do this. Don't try to do this because you'll end up shooting yourself in the foot like I did. He pointed out that basically all you need to do is switch the std views chunk to ranges views chunk, and then you're good to go. But in my opinion, your rule of thumb should just be don't mix and match. Because as soon as you start to mix and match, you're going to hit problems. So I believe now that I'm using ranges instead of ranges from range v3 instead of standard ranges, this is going to work. And the second error in my program, the comp compilation error, I mean, both the first one, I, I think the one in Godbolt was 261 lines. The one that I got was like 400. And then the second one was like 300 as well. Not great. I guess the problem here is that there are both views and algorithms that have the same name. So as soon as you forget a namespace on a view that also shares a name with an algorithm, your overload resolution errors aren't going to make sense unless if you look at the file that it's trying to read them from because otherwise you're just going to be going crazy seeing like I've passed in the right number of things, a binary operation and a range. And if you go to the docs and look at the uh, documentation for views, this will be what it tells you. But the key thing is that if you miss the namespace, it's going to collide with something else. Anyways, pretty terrible. Solution should be we should just call this scan once it shows up in C++ 26 or 29. Anyways, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Last thing I'll mention, once again, thanks to Tristan. You should go check out his Flux library. He provided an alternative solution that is using his library called Flux, which is very similar to Ranges. He solved my problem, therefore he gets a shout out. Even if you aren't interested in using the library, feel free to go to the library, give it a star on GitHub. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. Happy New Year once again, and we will see you in the next video.